Hey guys, just got done with the second film on the Halloween double feature pack, Mischief Night, starring Daniel Hugh Kelly, Ali Walker, and Nell Coet. Ali Walker's only in it for like a few scenes, she isn't very big in it. But anyway, the movie, it's got no special features on either of the films on this, I forgot to say my last one. But the funny thing was, both films of this pack both had footage of people watching. Night of the Living Dead on the TV, so that was quite funny. Uh, but they both had both they, that same film playing on the TVs in both films. Um, Mischief Night 2013 is not to be mixed with Mischief Night of 2014. They're two different films. Yep. So I, I went looking for Mischief Night uh, for my photo on YouTube and found there was a Mischief Night 2014. So I'm going to be reviewing that as well. I'm sure they're similar, but maybe not the same. So basically, the film starts out with two people, a man and a woman in the bathtub, getting it hard. And a bloke's going on about it. He wants to give her the salami or something like that. And he's going to give it to her hard. And she's like, oh, baby, I want it. I want it now. And uh, then they hear a noise. And they go and investigate. And it turns out the TV's off. So the bloke tells her to hide in the closet and he'll go and make the people pay. Well, you hear him go, ah, in the background. You don't see anything happen to him. So she decides, oh shit, what's happened? And then she sees the killer walking through in a yellow fisherman's coat, I think it's called, like a yellow fisherman raincoat thing. And, um, and anyway. And uh, he comes, it could be a Mac, I don't know, whatever you call that yellow thing that they put on with the whole fisherman's thing, I think it's called. Anyway, it don't matter. So it goes into the room, so she goes, shit, I'm going to run for it. Gets the keys, runs down what feels like millions upon millions of stairs. Oh, I was like, come on, 20 minutes later, two hours later, she's still laying down. Gets in the car, it won't start. I'm guessing the plug bit was taken out, start a plug or whatever that's called. And uh, then all of a sudden, the guy she's having an affair with smash up against the window and blood is going down the thing and then that's where, and then that's where it ends. On that bit. So then you see Emily. She's, uh, she's seen a therapist, Ali Walker. And basically she blames herself for her mum's death during a car accident. She was in the pack, a seat. Turns out her mum was texting. I always said texting was bad. See, getting addicted to social media and texting is wrong. And um, so basically she blames them. She's like, I don't want to hear this. I'm blind. And Annie Walker's, the therapist, makes fun like, oh, you need to see the truth and all this stuff, which isn't very funny, but I'm sure they did it in it because they wanted to be ironic and all that. And um, so then you find out that she's living in a home where basically those two people got killed with her dad and she's got a boyfriend named Jimmy and when he comes to a window she can smell him because he's trying to sneak up on her but the funny thing about this is when the killer's in the home she can't smell him she can't tell he's there and it's like this part it's like it's like just like a few yards away from her at one point so basically her dad goes oh I've got a date with your maths teacher but she set up and Oh, I really miss your mother and all this. And originally, I thought her mother was the woman who got killed. But it turns out she died in a car accident, so it wasn't. So they'd moved in the place. So then, basically, he goes, and you think, oh, it's nice. And then all of a sudden, she's watching Night of the Living Dead. And she's like, ooh. And then you see the thing open, and this guy walks in, but you don't see him. You just see, like, the lower body part. And then... Her auntie calls her and goes, I'm going to pop round and get that one-year-old costume you had when you were a little kid. But when you point out the cupboard, it's going to look like you had it just yesterday. Even though you're like 16, 17 now, and it would have been 16, 15 years old. Yes, it looked brand new. So, basically, she tries, to, she goes to leave, and then she comes back, she gets it right through the, right there. And it, there's blood everywhere, it's lovely. And then there's a whole lot of stalking about, and there's some really good, tense, suspenseful moments, you know, with the music, and her figuring out that someone's there, and then you think to yourself, and then you, oh yeah, and that's another thing. The uh, auntie goes, did your dad get a lift? 
Because his car's still outside. <gasps> so is he? Could it be? Could it be he's dead? Could it be that he's one of the people, or maybe the only one, tormenting her? Well, apparently it's mischief night with people throw eggs and stuff, and apparently this, this person took it way too far, or people. So, yeah, the film, to be honest, the film, I like the ending. The end is the best part, where all of a sudden she can say, because she can't say apparently because she's got trouble with the past. And then just at the end, a vision comes back, and she's like, oh! <gasps> Bang, and she survives, and you're like, what? I was in tears of laughter when she got her eyesight back like that. Like, boom, right at the appropriate time. That was funny. There's some real good kill bits in it, and there's some real good amazing bits in it, but sadly, most of that is at the end. The film, I did find it a lot better than All Hallows' Eve. All Hallows' Eve kind of was a bit of a letdown. Mischief Night was not that great, but it was a lot better. I would, I'd recommend, I'd recommend both of them if you like, you know, like kind of low budget movies, but I'd recommend Mischief Night more. It's not fantastic, it's not for everyone, but it's fairly decent. I mean, it had me want to watch all one hour and 26 minutes of it. It didn't feel like dragged on until around the middle part. I mean, the beginning's great, the middle bit's a little bit sluggish, and then the ending bit, about the last 20, 30 minutes, is really good. I felt, poor Jimmy. Eh? Another thing is, everybody tells him in the film to wait somewhere. And you're like, but are you going to come back for her? So, there's a great scene though in it, which I won't ruin near the end, where she, say, where, where she saves somebody. It's really good. You know, you kind of think to yourself, why aren't they just, why isn't, he, why isn't the killer or killers just killing her? Why are they just messing around with her because she's blind? Do they know she's blind? And you're like, then you think to yourself, is Jimmy a part of this? And you never find out, either way, why the people were doing it. Like, they just did it for the sake of it. And why did they kill the woman before, man? Because they just felt like it. I would have liked a more deeper kind of explanation. But the character of Emily is really fleshed out and really well done. I really liked her. All I kept thinking was this girl's really cute and sweet. And the fact that she's blind is just one of those things that, you know, sadly happened to her because of the crash but all I kept thinking was you know I'd love to date this girl if I was if I was her boyfriend Jimmy because she's wonderful sweet kind caring wants her dad to meet someone nice wants to be her boyfriend just the perfect you know no attitude nothing and Jimmy you only see a few times and you wonder what the hell's going on and basically that's it really her dad was a little bit creepy I, there was something off about him at the beginning um, but, you know, anyway, so, I think in the movie, it's only like, what, four kills, you know, it's not fantastic, it's not very gory until near the end anyway, but it's not gory at all really, it's just big loads of blood, so, what would I, would I recommend it to people, yes. Would I recommend this Blu-ray to people? Yeah, because if it's cost you $8 like it cost me, $4 for both each isn't that bad. I, all I know Eve, I thought was terrible, but it's okay, I guess, if you like me low budget. Mischief Night saved the Blu-ray for me. Mischief Night was great. I enjoyed it. I'm looking for the 2014 one, which I'm curious to see what that's about, because, you know, it's got a cover just like this one. So, with a mask. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the review, and take care, and definitely give Mischief Night a go, I'll give it a 2.5 a 2 out of 5, it's not fantastic, but it's got some good bits, so thanks for watching, and take care.